Hey, thank you for watching this video. There's more online at Embark Online. You can tweet me, and of course, here's the pie guy. All right, this is first grade, module six, lesson 22. And in this lesson, students are gonna continue practicing their identification of coins by name, by value, by what they look like, because we, we really do want students to understand coins, right? But in Common Core, that huh, coins have been devalued, no, no pun intended, in that really uh, coins are the tool that we're going to use as the excuse to practice addition. And in this lesson, uh, our concept of element is uh, s focused on taking a coin, identifying it, recognizing the value, and then adding one to it. And this is a stepping stone towards just continued practice of that standard algorithm that we learned earlier in the year. So let's get started. So here the directions say to match the label to the correct coins and write the value. So there will be more than one match for each coin name. And, and that's because we have heads and tails. And, you know, the, the idea is I'm not going to really... Do, do a lot of this because I think parents and teachers understand coins even in the Common Core era. <laughs> but so the idea is, hey, what's a nickel? We need to recognize what the, the nickel looks like and we need to recognize the value of that nickel. So let's start with saying, well, we know the value. The value of that nickel is five cents. And we can see that, oh, nickel goes there and a nickel goes there. And that's the idea. So What's the value of a dime? Well, the value of a dime is 10 cents. And where do we see a dime? Well, there's the tails side of a dime. And way down there is the head side of the dime. Oh, let's just keep going because I'm on a roll. What's a quarter? So a quarter is 25 cents. And where do we see a quarter? Well, there's a quarter. There's the tail side of the quarter right there. And the head side is right down here, and so it goes right there. And by a process of elimination, we see the two remaining coins. There's the tail side, and that's the head side of our penny. And so our penny, oh, let's get, oh, let's do black one cent. And the penny is way up there, and the penny is right there. So that's the idea, parents, is we're just continuing to help our students recognize the names, nickel, dime, quarter, and penny, recognize their value, and we're recognizing what they look like. Now, ultimately, that's not going to be good enough because ultimately we're going to want our students to be doing some addition with those coins and the values, but right now we're just kind of identifying them. The thing I love about Eureka Math is its um, focus on problem solving, real live problem solving, rather than just solving a bunch of little problems. And so here, Lee has one coin in his pocket. We don't know what the coin is, it doesn't say so. And then Pedro has three coins. Pedro has more money than Lee. Draw a picture to show the coins each boy might have. So what's beautiful about this, parents and teachers, is there's a ton of different answers that'll work. And so um, we want to let our students to embrace that problem solving, that, I don't know, that uncertainty, that, that, that idea that there could be more than just one right answer. So I'm going to give you a example. Let your kids play. In fact, you might even want to let them compare their answers with one another and maybe create a big list of all, a, a variety of different answers that are possible. So what's one coin that could be in Lee's pocket? Well, one coin could be, oh, let's say a nickel. Lee has a nickel. Pedro has more money than Lee and he has to have three coins. Well, it can't be three pennies because three pennies would only be three cents, right? Oh, but we can have maybe two pennies, one penny, two pennies, and then a third coin could be a nickel. So that's more money than Lee, all right? Is that the only answer? No way. There's a ton of different answers that would work. Um, and we're just going to let the students come up with how Lee can have one coin, 
Pedro could have three coins, but Pedro has more money than Lee. Same kind of problem. It's a problem solving, but this one is a little bit less intuitive because we see Bailey has four coins in her pocket, and I'm going to go ahead and draw them. One, two, three, four. We don't know the values of them yet. And Ingrid, here's the cool thing. Ingrid has four coins in her pocket. One, two, three, four. But here's the deal. Ingrid has more money than Bailey. So now we have to come up with an idea for what coins would be in Bailey's pocket and what coins would be in Ingrid's pocket so that Ingrid has more money than Bailey. Uh, teachers, uh, in a, I don't know, the way we would write that mathematically speaking, we want our greater than or less than symbol to look like that. We want the less than symbol. We want Bailey's pocket to be less than Ingrid's pocket. That's your bonus. That is absolutely not first grade. And parents and teachers, that wraps up, uh, let's see, a classic first grade module six, lesson 22. Students are going to continue practicing identifying their coin by image, name, and value. But in the concept development, they started adding, practicing adding one cent to the value of any coin. Our homework didn't exactly do that. Our homework was just really focusing on some problem solving and identification. Hey, speaking of identification, go ahead identify my YouTube channel and then subscribe.